Hello there, my name is Mac Horse, and welcome to the first episode of Blockbuster Tutorial Series. In this video, I'll show you how to record and playback body actors using scenes. Before we'll get into this tutorial, make sure you have Blockbuster 2.1, Metamorph 1.2.3, and Maclib 2.1 mods installed. Alright, in order to record some actors, we need to create a new scene. A scene is basically a feature in Blockbuster mod, which manages and synchronizes multiple body actors together. To create a scene, open the dashboard screen, by pressing zero key on the keyboard. Once the dashboard is opened, click on the clapper icon. This will open the scenes panel, which is used to edit and manage scenes. Click on the three horizontal lines icon. This will open the scene manager. Here you can add, duplicate, rename, and remove scenes. Click on the big plus icon, and enter the desired scene name. It could be anything, however it's limited to letters, digits, underscore, hyphen, and some special characters. No spaces though. Once the scene is created, we can add a replay, which is responsible for actor's configuration. Click on the plus icon on the right of replay list and then a new replay will be created. A lot of fields will pop up, but don't get overwhelmed. First, let's create another replay, and give both replays a morph, that is an appearance. For simplicity, let's make the first replay Steve, and the second replay Alex. Now let's record these replays, and I'll cover all of these options one by one afterwards. Select the first replay, and close the dashboard screen, by pressing escape key. And now we're ready to record. Press the record scene replay key bind, which is right alt by default, to start recording. An important note about this key bind, it will start recording the act you selected in the scenes panel. So make sure you selected the right replay. A countdown will appear with the name of the replay's recording ID, and once the one and a half seconds countdown will pass, the scene will start recording your actions. Once you've finished acting, press the record scene replay keybind again. It will stop the recording process. Let's record the second replay. If you accidentally started recording, you have time, during countdown, to stop a recording process by pressing the record keybind second time. But if you weren't fast enough to cancel it, fortunately, Blockbuster saves up to 5 previous versions of a player recording. You can use Record Restore, then Replays Recording ID, and 1. Command to restore latest version you just overwrote. As you can see, the first actor has started playing as well. This allows you to synchronize your movement and react to other actors in the scene. Now, once both actors are recorded, stand back and play back the scene using the play slash stop scene keybind, which is right control by default. Beautiful. Theoretically, you can add and record as many actors as you want. Same goes with scenes. Now let's get over the options provided by the scenes panel. Recording ID field is the file name of the player recording file. Those are global, meaning that if you use the same recording ID in another scene, the other scene will use the same player recording, and therefore overwrite it. As long as you use the automatically generated recording ID by the scene, you should be fine. Name tag field allows you to edit the name tag you give entities, with a name tag item. You can use this option to give a name tag to replays actor, which lets you easier specify specific actor or actors, in commands using target selectors. Health allows to set initial amount of health an actor has. You can't set more than maximum HP of an actor entity, which is 20 by default, or set by the morph. Invincible toggle makes actor invincible to most damage types, but for exception to creative player damage. This can be used to fix actors flashing red after heroic landing. Invisible toggle hides the actor. This option can be used for helper actors to control redstone circuits, or interact somehow in the world in order to create magical or illusion effects.
fake player toggle allows to work around certain actions not working correctly with other mods or vanilla, like making more players models working with actors. Some of the other replay options don't work correctly with fake player, like invisible option. Teleport back toggle allows to turn off a feature to teleport back the player to the original place, where it started recording. Pick and edit buttons allow you to modify currently selected replay's actor appearance. Pick button opens morph picker, from which you can pick any morph in the menu. Meanwhile edit button allows to jump directly to morph editing. P and E keys can be used to do pick and edit actions, respectively. More about that in the next episode. Attach button will be covered in 4th episode. Record button is for the legacy way of recording actors. I'll just pretend like it doesn't exist. Update data allows to copy the player's data which is related to fake player option. Rename prefix button allows to quickly rename all the recording IDs in this scene. The way it works is you input a new prefix, and then it goes through every replay and replaces everything before the last underscore, with the new prefix that was given. This can be used to change the prefix of the recording IDs after you duplicate a scene. Edit record and edit camera will be shown in future episodes. And finally teleport button allows to teleport to replay's starting position, after it was recorded of course. You can also press T key to teleport. See full list of key combinations in keybinds menu, which can be opened by pressing F9. There are also global options of the scene independent from individual replays. You can access those by clicking the gear icon button near the scene manager button, or by pressing O on the keyboard. Display title allows to set some sort of note or a comment about this scene, like, this is for a tutorial. On start command field allows you to provide a command which will be executed when scene starts playing. Here you can add commands like, time set day, or time set night, in case you want your scenes automatically switch the time according to the script. On stop command field does the same, but when scene stops playing. Loops toggle allows to enable looping of actors playback in the scene. Actors are looped individually though, rather than rewinding the scene when all actors stopped playing. And finally, audio track options on the left allows to attach an audio track to a scene to be synced during recording and playback. Those options are covered in a separate video made by Tosla. However, watch it after you've done with the series. Oh, that's interesting. The redstone wire is missing here. I wonder who could have break it. Yeah. Going back to the scenes panel, I'm not really sure whether I should do a full overview of duplicate rename and remove buttons, but I'll demonstrate those anyways. You can duplicate currently selected scene by clicking on double plus icon. A modal will pop up and you'll be able to enter a name for newly duplicated scene. You can rename currently selected scene by clicking on pencil icon. Type in a new name, and it will be renamed. And finally, you can remove currently selected scene, forever, by clicking on the minus icon. Confirm that you want to remove the scene, and it will be removed forever. Player recording files will not be removed though, so if you accidentally remove a scene, you'll have to only reconfigure the scene, rather than record it again. Same goes with duplicating and renaming the prefix. Keep in mind that these modals can be also cancelled, by pressing escape, and confirmed, by pressing enter. So don't press accidentally enter when removal confirmation is opened, because it will remove the scene. That should be it. If you're wondering where scenes are stored, then look up current world's blockbuster folder, and there will be scenes folder with .dat files. And yes, you can copy these scene files to another worlds, 
to be used as templates. Obviously, you would have to record actors again. Other than that, that's it. I hope this tutorial taught you how to record, playback and manage actors. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next episode.